Hi, this is Presh Talwalkar. This riddle is a logic puzzle, and it assumes that the characters can reason with absolute precision, so pay attention to the details of the story. Alice and Bob are trapped by an evil logician. In their cells, Alice can see exactly 12 trees, and Bob can see exactly 8 trees. They're told that together they can see all the trees in the prison, but that no tree is seen by both people. Neither person knows how many trees the other person sees. Every day, the logician visits Alice in her cell in the morning and asks, are there 18 or 20 trees in total? If Alice knows the answer, she can say, but if she doesn't know, then she's going to pass. In that case, the logician then goes visits Bob in his cell and then asks the same question. If Bob knows, he can give the answer, otherwise he also is going to pass. If they both pass, then the same process is repeated the next day. Now at some point they're going to want to guess because they don't want to keep passing and staying in prison forever. However, if either person doesn't know and they guess incorrectly, then they're both going to be imprisoned forever. If either person does know and guesses correctly, then they're both going to be set free immediately. Now they can't communicate with each other the number of trees that they see. But the question is, can they do better than random chance? Can they do better than just guessing 18 or 20? If they both understand the rules of the game, can they escape and reason their way out with certainty? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So at first it seems impossible. Alice just sees 12 trees, so she doesn't know if they're 18 or 20 trees, and Bob only sees 8 trees, so he doesn't know if they're 18 or 20 trees, and it doesn't seem like they can ever figure it out because all they see is the number of trees in front of them. However, what happens is that each day when they give an answer, that actually conveys information to the other person. So let's start out on day one. When Alice is asked the question, do you see 18 or 20 trees? If she saw 19 or 20 trees, she could exclude the answer of 18, and she could actually conclude that there were 20 trees. What Alice does see is she only sees 12 trees, so she has to pass. However, the fact that she passes actually conveys to Bob that Alice is not seeing 19 or 20 trees, she actually sees at most 18 trees. So this information gets conveyed to Bob. If Bob only saw zero or one trees, knowing that Alice saw at most 18 trees, Bob could conclude that there were 18 trees. However, Bob sees more than zero or one trees, he actually sees eight trees, so he's not sure if they're 18 or 20 trees, so he's gonna wanna pass. But the fact that he passes actually relays the information to Alice that Alice says, all right, logically, Bob must not have seen zero or one trees. He must have seen at least two trees. So we've actually gained some information on the fact that each person has passed on day one. And this information can be built upon on day two. Now, Alice knows that Bob sees at least two trees. So if Alice saw 17 or 18 trees, she would actually know that there would have to be 20 trees. However, since Alice only sees 12 trees, she once again has to pass. But that conveys to Bob that Bob realizes, all right, Alice must not have seen 17 or 18 trees. She must have seen at most 16 trees. Knowing this, if Bob saw two or three trees, then Bob would actually be able to say, all right, there must be 18 trees because 20 trees would not be possible. Two or three plus 16 would never get to 20. But since Bob sees actually eight trees, he can't exclude that possibility, so he still thinks there could be 18 or 20. But because he passes, that conveys information to Alice that Bob must see at least four trees. We can continue the logic for the next day. If Bob sees at least four trees, if Alice saw 15 or 16 trees, she could exclude the possibility that there were only 18 trees, and she would conclude that there are 20 trees. Once again, Alice only sees 12 trees, so she has to pass. But the act of passing actually conveys information that Bob is saying, all right, if she passes on day three, that means she has to see at most 14 trees. Bob can take that information, and if he saw four or five trees, knowing Alice saw at most 14, then he would be able to exclude the possibility of 20 and say there are only 18 trees. But once again, Bob sees eight trees, so he's going to pass, 
And that conveys information that Alice is alright, Bob must have seen at least six trees, otherwise he would have said there were 18. This brings us to day four where we continue the logic. If Alice saw only 13 or 14 trees, knowing Bob saw at least six, then she would be able to exclude 18 and say there must be 20 trees. But since Alice only sees 12 trees, she's going to pass once again, and that conveys information to Bob that Alice sees at most 12 trees. So if Alice saw at most 12 trees and he saw 6 or 7, he would be able to exclude 20 and say there must be 18 trees. Since he sees 8 trees, he has to pass, and that conveys to Alice that Bob must see at least 8 trees. And now we actually get to the result in day 5. Alice knows that she sees 12 trees and Bob sees at least 8 trees, so she can exclude the possibility of 18 trees. She can conclude there must be 20 trees in total. So on day 5 in the morning, Alice says there are 20 trees, she is correct, and they are both set free forever. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video, please subscribe to my channel and make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.